first world order radio final lead final lead we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio Get on into some of that Buddha consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance, the most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance, the most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know how intention is straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. Peace. We're back once again. Dr. Alim L. Bay's show. My co-host, my wife, Kadera Maude, Tupac L. Bay. Um, we're going to discuss tonight conspiracy, imprisonment, and Manchurian candidates. We're going to get into the imprisonment part first, in which that whenever you do any research or study, especially on statistics, you will find out that at least two, um, over two million people are incarcerated and more than 50% of them are melanated beings. Now, what's interesting is that the United States is number one in incarcerating their citizens, or should, should I say alleged citizens, because remember, the 14th Amendment was never fully ratified. Three-fourths of the states, which at the time, it was only 19 states, and it was brought before the 19 states, and 15 of those 19 states denied the passing of the 14th Amendment. And then it was never put before the other 31 states, in which that, of course, 19 plus 31 will make 50. So the other 31 states never got the chance in order to rectify that situation, and three-fourths vote was never agreed upon, so the 14th Amendment was never fully ratified. Therefore, no one is really a citizen, all right? And that goes specifically for us because we never were and was never meant to be according to the Dress Scott case opinion of Judge Tanny. So what is the solution? Real simple. You declare your own status. Declare your nationality. Declare and claim your birthright. All right now, as we've been saying, the United States has over two million um, of its alleged citizens, as we would say, in federal and state prison and jail. All right. Now, when we look at the various states, um, like for example, California. California has the sixth largest economy in the world, and the population is 52% non-white. And, of course, you know, um, the growing population um, is 69% non-white um, within the prisons. 
but yet the so-called black population only makes up 7% of the state. And it has the population prison um, prison population of that of 32% of blacks, I said blacks. And this is the largest population of black inmates, um, I guess you could say incarceration rate. You know, if you go and look at any and all of these other states, you'll find very similar scenarios that blacks are being used as collateral and a commodity. We are the human resource. We are the debt. And they're using our bodies as the collection. We'll get more into um, that in a second here. Let's get into some more of these various states. Texas, for instance, you know, of course, ranks on number three in spending on prisons, while it ranks 20th in education. And it ranks 15th in incarceration of drug offenders. It ranks number one in putting um, said citizens to death. Texas has a black population of 11%, but a black prison population of 44% in Florida. Um, the state is ranked 49th in incarceration rate and 28th in prison spending. Florida has a said black population equal to 14%, yet the said black prison population is that of 54%. Blacks in that state has a majority only in the prison population. And Florida ranks 18th in this spending on education. We go to Georgia. Um, Georgia is 29th. Um, but yet 60, um, 64% in the said black population in prison. Ohio is 52% population in prison. I was 24%. So we are looking at these prisons and the population and the commodity in which that is being used majority or melanated men. Moorish brothers and sisters. Now, this is ridiculous. All right? Now, we continue on with the um, disinformation, and, and you will see what we, what we have to start strategizing here because um, we're talking about black power and we're talking about um, Moorish reclamation and nationality. But if but this is one of the tenets in which that we have to master one of the so called confront um confront um I guess maybe fully and Fred Fred Watson said it best, one of the nine confrontations um of white supremacy. These are one of the nine battlegrounds of white supremacy. All right, in which that we have to fight against. Now let's let's explain how they're able to do this. They're able to do this because at birth our birth certificates is worth its weight in gold. Those actually are bonds. Okay? And we'll get more into this in a second. Let me finish going over these states. Um, Wisconsin is 37% um, said black population. Wisconsin is 48% said black um, population. Um, Illinois is 65% said black population. 
Missouri is 45% said black um, said black population. Arkansas is 52% said black population. Um, Louisiana is 76% black population. Mississippi is 75% black population. Alabama is 65% black population. Tennessee is 53% black population. Kentucky is 36. Indiana is 42. Michigan is 55. South Carolina is 69. North Carolina is 64. Virginia is 68. Pennsylvania is 56. New York is 51. Delaware is 63. Uh, Maryland is 77. Um, Connecticut is 47. New Jersey is 64. Rhode Island is 30 percent. So the states where um, the said blacks are not being placed in prison, as a matter of course, um, you know, with the population, uh, would be states such as Iowa and Maine and New Hampshire. And that's because of the small black population rate within those areas. But nearly every state is using blacks as the collateral for their state funding. And you'll see what I mean in a second. As we were saying, the birth certificate with the straw man name on it, the artificial name or the artificial entity corporation at birth is worth its weight in gold. Let's say a child weighs 10 pounds. Um, there's 16 ounces in each pound, and gold right now is a thousand over a thousand dollars an ounce. So that means that bond, which is that birth certificate, that child of paper will come up to about $160,000. And then when the bank gets it, they do fractionalized banking in which they can mark it up 10% or 10 times higher the value, um, actually, excuse me, in which that it comes to now $1.6 million. So that birth certificate is approximately a $1 million. And then at the age of 18, it matures. Now, let's look at these corporations that are in it. Like, for example, every prisoner has a monetary value to our government, whether it's local, county, state, or federal. Bonds are written based on the person's name and Social Security number and are sold through a brokerage firm such as A.G. Edwards or Merrill Lynch, who has the contact to sell all the prison bonds for the city, county, state, and federal prisons. You all have to understand this. This is massive. This is how deep the rabbit hole goes. So over 50% of the money market bonds right now are purchased in Japan or China. I've been told by a researcher that Walmart um, and Kmart also purchases the um, also purchases the bonds. Walmart mostly um, do so by emptying out their bank account at night, and both companies are fronts for enormous money machines. And of course, you know there's as many of our people you see in these particular stores. The way the bonds work is that they are monetized and placed on the alleged crime, right? That's what they're doing. Their monetary value is placed on the alleged crime. In other words, there's a statue in which they claim that you violated in which they attach the bond to for a monetary value, of course. And then fractured the way banks fractured their money, as we just finished going over. In other words, if a person is convicted of a felony, the value 
would be $4 million. The county, city, state, then multiplies it by 10, so that the bond then goes out for sale with the president's name. What is that name, though? That name is what? The straw man. The name is spelled in all caps. It appears to be the name of the individual, but it actually isn't. Because you were not taught in grammar school or elementary school to write your name in all caps. To so identify a proper person or proper noun, which is that's what your name is, person, place, or thing, it must be in upper and lower case. If it is not, then just like on the tombstone, your name in all caps signifies someone who is dead. So hence they say that you're a civilist mortus, that you're dead in the eyes of the law. This is last law dictionary before the edition. You can get in and look it up. Anyway, the bond goes out for sale of the person's name and social security number. And that is a short term promissory note. And it's offered at forty million dollars. Right? Now, perhaps an investor will offer 40% up to $40 million or $16 million. It's bid it on because that is Because that prison bond is auctioned. This is no different than um, the slave market. Matter of fact, it's the same. It became a little bit more sophisticated and more hidden with it. Once this promissory note um, up to face value of $40 million reached the bank, it is then multiplied again by 200 to 300 times or 300% and sold at the bank securities. For those of you who wonder why the United States has more people in prison per capita than any other nation on earth, you'll begin to understand how we can have a weakened economy and still fund wars overseas. It's all based on prisoners. In other words, prisons for profit. Now the thing is, is that they have privatized the businesses and corporations run these prisons now. The owners of the prisons, if you don't know, are the Lehman Brothers, who sits at the helm and on the board of the Federal Reserve Bank. The Lehman Brothers happen to be the brothers in which that an individual that you might know of, you all might know of, his name is Johnny Cochran, the world-famous lawyer who passed a few years ago who was poisoned, um, or some say that um, there was some, some type of um, cell phone in which that caused damage, uh, cerebral damage in his brain in which that caused hemorrhaging, and he died. This is what we do know, is that before Johnny Cochran died, he was going to go after the Lehman Brothers and many others, such as Harvard University, Yale University, um, different um, railroad companies, and et cetera, for reparations. Because this is how they made their money, was off of slavery. So he was going to go after these individuals. So more than likely, these individuals are the ones in which that killed um, Johnny Cochran, in particular the Lehman Brothers. There's no coincidence that um, in 2008 they supposedly filed bankruptcy, um, but yet we're still on the board of the Federal Reserve Bank. That's amazing to me. But anyway, knowing all of this and knowing that a prisoner can have a net worth of, say, $10,000 per day in the money market helps explain um, this this so-called merchandise and warehouses, because actually your birth certificate is a warehouse receipt. This is why um, the straw boss, who's the head of the straw men, is called the warrant. And why warrants are issued, and he's the warden. You have to look at these words. All these words tell the story here. And you have to look them up in the Black's Law Dictionary as well as also Webster Dictionary who um Webster was an esquire, so he has a lot of he had a lot of the um dictionary terms um, from law inside his um 
definitions. So you definitely want to look that up. All right. So we speak about the Lehman Brothers, and the Lehman Brothers worked through um, being the um, prison system. But the prison system in, the, um, in America, as the owners of the prison system in America, comes through the Correction Corp of America, and its headquarters is is in um, Nashville, Tennessee, and owns all private prison systems in America, and are selling the commercial papers. How it works? Real simple. A bid bond is done, which is on a form twenty four. Now, also, all the lawyers use a Form 24. They use their Form of 24 in which that on their Forms of 24, it states that anything they receive is a gift. So if you pay a lawyer, they actually fill out at the end of the um, um every time that they, um, for their tax purposes, they'll fill out a 24 form for the government to pay them because they're saying that they only received Gifts. So that's that's what you are getting when you pay your lawyer. But anyway, a bid bond is done on the form twenty four, which comes out, um, you know, which this is all within um, a state. Um, I guess you say state, um, state forms. You have a form twenty four bid bond. You have a performance bond, which is form twenty five. You have a um, payment bond, which is a Form 25A. These bonds are being underwritten by the banks, in particular the 12 Federal Reserve Banks, in which that is linked on the back of your Social Security card. Those numbers that's on the back of your security, um, those numbers and, and the letter in front of those numbers on the back of your Security card are the 12 Federal Reserve Banks. Who did we tell you that sat on the council or the board of the Federal Reserve Bank was the Lehman Brothers? The Lehman Brothers in New York are the underwriters on those bonds. Because they sit at the helm of the 12 Federal Reserve Banks. Um, let me give you a good example. Um, if you have E on the back of your Social Security card, E is uh, Richmond, Virginia, Charlotte, North Carolina. F is Atlanta, Georgia. B is New York City. D is Cleveland. Um, so it goes on and on like that. So, um, But it goes from A through L, 12 of them. And these are ordered for the Reserve Bank. So what's that? Like you said, the Lehman Brothers are the underwriters for those bonds. So they never had to file bankruptcy, number one. The bonds are being underwritten, as you said, from the bank. So this is where paying whatever groups come in at. The plaintiff in all the criminal tax cases in the United States is the paying weapons group as the United States of America. The paying weapon group is a group of international businesses. The paying weapon group is provide, providing the securities for the prisons and is selling the bonds in the banks. The ABA, which is the American Banking Association, like the Union Brothers, in New York, as we said, all the underwriters are the bonds. The banks, the underwriters, is where the money is originally coming from. And we know the Federal Reserve Banks make the money on whim. It's fiat notes. It has no real substance whatsoever. We now know this because of the House Joint Resolution 192, 1933. Franklin Delano Roosevelt took the money off the gold standard. So there's no longer any gold, and then Richard Nixon in 1972 took the silver. So now the gold and silver is no longer backing the fiat notes, the monies, for the reserve notes or the FRAs. So that means that it is worth only the money in which that is, um, in which that is going towards the print of it, which is two cents. So that means that a $1 bill, $5 bill, $10 bill, $20 bill, $50 bill, $100 bill, is still two cents to produce. No difference. So 
so it has no substance because you know that even two cents is not actually copper any longer. If you cut it open, you will see um, aluminum or tin, something of that type of substance, but it's not even copper. So what they do is that there's a six-digit tracking number that is issued for the um, certificates of stock in the commodity and the security exchange in the United States. It's called the QCIP number. And you can go to www.qcip.com and look at this information up. All right? And then there's a nine-digit number called the ordinance number that is issued for the certificate of stock. Go international to ANA. All right? ANA, which is in Brussels, Belgium, which you have the computer there um, of the IBM. Um, 3666, which is supposed to be the computer of the mark of the beast. But this is what this is actually being tallied through. These securities are sold through the commodity and stock exchange. Now, before it gets there, the birth certificate goes through the DTC, Depository Trust Corporation, and its subsidiary corporations. Now, the Depository Trust Corporation is located at 55 Water Street, New York City, New York, 10041. The bottom line is that they are selling stock in the prison system. The jails are referred to as warehouses, and the prisoners are called goods, real property. So hence, this is where you have to learn the science of the optional Form 90 and optional Form 91. These two particular forms will help along with the science of the bid bond, performance bond, and payment bond, Form 24, 25, 25A, which you need to learn and get this information because these are the forms that you be using in order to get the people that you love, your loved ones, out of jail. Now, optional Form 90 and 91, optional Form 90 is release of lien from real property or real property. Option form 91 is release of personal property from escrow. Escrow is jail. You have to understand this. This is what's going on. So they are selling the goods or the account of chattel. Remember, chattel is a nice little French word for cattle, for the herds. The herd, and they herd us right into jail, and we are sheeples, led to the slaughter, as they would say. And this, everything that is going on today in the world is going towards these um, concentration camps and detention centers, slash, as I told you before, debtor prisons. So you see the stock market is crashing. It's down now 552%. In the stock market, no coincidence that is happening on the same day that the massive solar flare has bombarded the planet Earth and it is now also affecting electronics and satellites, cell phones, TVs, radios, etc. No coincidence. So as the energies from the solar system from the sun itself intensifies, the more this economy will self-destruct. Because once again, as above, so below, as within, so without. There's a correlation to everything which that is going on because the rays of the sun symbolizes currency or current in which that is being sent for massive current. Well, the money isn't backed by any current or currency. So the increase of real currency coming in and the decrease of fake currency slash fiat notes going out. I won't get too metaphysical because some of y'all might have missed that shit. But anyway, they are selling the goods or the account as chattel and as commercial property or commercial papers on the stock exchange on Wall Street, y'all. This reminds me of the days when the slaves were bought and sold 
or the auction block. Because that's exactly what it is. Anyway, the Payne Weber Group is the prime stockholder in this Correction Corp of America. Remember, we told you these are the ones who um, own the prison system, backed by the underwriters of the Lehman Brothers. However, there are 20 largest companies, uh, such as Walmart, Exxon, General Motors, Ford, uh, Motors, um, Chevy, Texaco, City Corps, IBM, um, Phillips, um, Hewitt Packard, Verizon, United Postal Service, and et cetera, are all involved, as well as other stockholding corporations. They're all involved. And, of course, the money generated, now check this out, the money generated is not accounted to the people. Even though the Correction Corporation of America through the Payne Weber Group is acting in the capacity of the United States of America. Well, remember, the United States of America is a corporation. So they don't have to give any account to the people whatsoever. All right. So um All right. Now Let's let's get into some more of this because I think you're beginning hopefully to understand what's really going on here and how deep the rabbit hole really goes. Because this this shit is deep. All right. Um, we're gonna go to questions um, right now. Caller ending in area code six, um, beginning in area code six zero one. You're on the air. So you mean to tell me that the Lehman Brothers are part of this seven percent of this organization who run the whole world? I think they some like Jews or something like that. You mean? Yes. Because I heard you said yeah, that the United States is. They are the ones that are promoting privatizations of the prison system, and they are the underwriters for the bonds for the prisoners, or who supposedly have broken the statutes or violated the code to rules or regulations or ordinances of the so-called said municipalities, whether it's local or or county or state, yes. Damn, that's deep. And then, that's deep. And I also heard you saying about uh, Johnny Cochran and all that. You know, I I thought that same thing. He is is a wealthy, black, successful lawyer. And, then you know, I'm not quite sure he did the guy taking care of himself. You know, eating proper and all that, and he just ended up dying. I, I, I think that I look at as they want him to make too much money. Him being a Negro or whatever, they like, well, we gotta wipe this guy out because he stopped us from making money. We make money up well, there. Exactly. I mean, I mean, think about it. If he did, you hear what I said? He said he put. Um, he already filed suits. Him and eight other um, um, well successful attorneys, black attorneys who have already won billions of dollars. These attorneys, I'm talking about that was with Johnny Cochran, all of them won in billions of dollars against corporations. Dang. And they were going after corporations such as Harvard, Yale, the Lehman Brothers, Wells Fargo, um, um, AIG, insurance companies. They were going right. after, um, they were going after the, um, the trail um um, the um, training system, you know, the, uh, you know, they were going after all of these individuals, you know. So, you know, of course, they want him out the picture. Because yeah, he's going to go for reparations. He's going for reparations for our people. Right, right. Only people who ain't got so that yet. Um, right, of course, you struck the head off the um, snake, right? You cut the head off the snake, and so he was the head. 
And we haven't heard anything else from the rest of those um, seven um, attorneys that which I was involved with him who was um, taking it before, um, um, getting ready to take it um, into the court, to the United States Supreme Court. Yeah, it's time for that devil to go now. It's time for him to go. Now, Way now, past now, you it's, it's no coincidence that's just today that on the Tether Smiley show, all of a sudden we had Cornell West and Jesse Jackson talking about reparations. Hold up. Do we really think we're going to get reparations and the economy is falling the way that it's falling? Right. That's a distraction. Got to be. Because why are we talking about the destruction of the economy of the United States and the fact that they just lost their credit, their triple A credit rating, and now it's down to double um, um double A credit rating. Never and this is the first time in history that, that the United States has lost its credit rating. And then Obama just finished talking about um, about the debt um, ceiling um, having a limit on it. Exactly. This is, what's been going on. this is what's been going in the news now for the last two weeks or so. So everything is being tied back to this information we're going to be talking about tonight. Word up. So this is, what, this is what the rebellion is about in the U.K. and London. They're tired of the brothers and sisters getting locked up. They're tired of the police brutality. <clears throat> so they're fighting back. I see that. I see that. That's real big. Yeah, they're they trying to really stop us from, yeah, I see that. Yeah, man, I appreciate this listening right here, man. Keep on, keep oh, on yeah. kicking them, bro. I'm still listening. Oh, yeah, all right. Well, we're going to keep doing our thing, God, because we're going to get it out there and right. people finally understand what's really going on. All right, thank you. All right, peace, God. Peace, God. 727 area code, you're on the line. Hello? Yes, peace. How you doing, yeah. brother? Hey, uh, how you doing? So we're doing good. Um, uh, well, my question is um, about uh, Johnny, Co- Johnny Cochran. You know, you said mm-hmm. they killed him for what? Now he was going at who? Because I um I knew some of his re- relatives in Miami, and um yeah, like, well he passed. was going for reparations, um payment of reparations to black people. Um he was going to go and um he was going after Ivy League school, um the trail lines such as um um the transit lines, I guess you could say, such as the um train um systems. He was going after um, people at the Federal Reserve Bank. He was going after um, insurance companies. These are all individuals who made and, and families who made their monies off of slavery. And so they have used the slavery as a monopoly, and they have actually taken the methods of slavery and now is applying it to the prison system. So hence the reason why in the Constitution it says that you um, you will not be jailed uh, unless there's a um, um, you would not be jailed for a debt. That's what the Constitution says, that you're not going to jail. Supposedly you don't go to jail for a debt. However, it also states um, that you will go to jail, however, um, or slavery don't exist, I should say, unless you go to jail. So, you know, if you read the Constitution, it states specifically that, yes, yeah, slavery supposedly is over, however, it isn't if you go to jail. So, they just told you, even within there, they gave Dang. leeway to the fact that that slavery would still be practiced through the prison system. So they are telling you where it's being practiced at. Mm-hmm. So what? What's reparations? Reparations what is, that, like is or getting money. No, reparations is getting monies or some type of resource or um, some type of source back for the work in which the, for the blood, sweat, and tears of our ancestors over the last. Um, 400 years, 500 years Holocaust, as they would say, um, and for the abuse, for the de, uh, for the um, dehumanization, for the humiliation in which that we had to put up with, for us building this um, 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 society. You know what I'm saying? We built the Capitol building. We built Washington, D.C. We built the White House. We built um, Philadelphia. We built, we built many of the cities throughout this United States. And but yet we was never paid for it. So reparations symbolizes the payment for
for the things in which that we have done um, and for the abuse in which that we have taken because when you look at international law, um, these, um, all this in which that is going on here in the United States over the last 500 years will go into genocide. All right? It will go into genocide. And if you read the Universal Declaration on Human Rights, it states, it states specifically that genocide will not be a, um, a formal practice by um, by the various states, but it is. The United States practiced it for 500 years, and it's still practicing it. When you see them chemtrails and when you see GMOs, which is genetically modified organisms in your food, when you see Monsanto talking about terminated seeds, these are still all forms of genocide. When you see seedless um, on watermelons and grapes and fruits, this is all still forms of genocide. When you see soybean um, in the food, um, soybean oil you throughout the um, various products and it's being replaced with coconut oil you and a replaced peanut oil you and different things like that. And um, soybean has a high amount of estrogen, which that is making our women obese and making the brothers um, obese and fat and um, it's shrinking their testicles and penises. So genocide is still being um, waged against us because it's a form of their population control agenda. All right, next question we'll go to caller. Area code 904, you're on the line. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. How you hey, doing? Hey, I, I got caught up so much. Um, my question is, I mean, what's the, I mean, what to do because – now that I'm becoming conscious, um, conscious, um, it's like I'm seeing stuff that I never paid attention to now. Like the little oh, yeah. that's, that's the whole point on the elevator conscious. and, you know, little stuff. And it's just like, I mean, what to do? I mean, I'm practicing meditation. I mean, is it possible to stop this? Of course or it is. The creator going to step because in everything, and do it. Look, the all is mind and everything in this world and in this universe is mental. Right, right. Right. So that is that is one of of metaphysics. Now when you get into these are this is part of the seven universal laws of Tahuti. So number one, we as the planet and being the oldest people on the planet means that we have the most power connection to the planet. So if we change our mind states and become more of a collective unit, in other words, collective minds, we'll be able to control the situations in which that is going on. So this is the point of us doing what we're doing is to awaken the people to um, the nonsense which that is going on and teach them solutions. All right, we haven't gotten to the solution part yet. We're going to get that um, in the second hour. Right now we're just trying to um, get the information in and get the questions out so that as we get into the solutions, you know, we can get into another um, half an hour of um Solutions. Hopefully, other people can um, be there and give their solutions to it. But um, we will get the solutions um, within the next hour. But um, right now, this is what I can tell you: continue doing your meditations. Um, continue eating at least 50% raw food. Drink alkaline water because the first science of survival is number one: is health. Yeah. All right. And, um, then, I, I, I um, almost cut out meat. Um, I'm right. trying to stay away from meat. Um, right. It's just, it's so scary because now... No, when no, I, need, no need to be scared. I mean, now, now, now let's, when let's, I listen to my own people deal, talk... Let's, let's, let's yeah. deal with the mm-hmm. fear mechanism. Because when I got into this information 25 years ago, right. we was talking about the Illuminati, we was talking about the Builder Burgers, we was talking about the Trilateral Commission, the CFR, the Council on Foreign Relations. We knew exactly who was doing this, who the names were on the list, because we was following up on the brother Steve Copley. However... The solution is real simple. Number one, master yourself and be a beacon of light. And the energy in which that you vibrate from will change the next individual in which that you come in contact with. And it will speed up their cellular rate so that they begin to ask questions. And they become more conscious and aware. And soon you have a collective unit. And all of you are now thinking the same thoughts. And oh, okay, I see. Yeah. So we need to get right. that milk thing then, together, everybody. Right. And try to come on that same level. Is, right. This is what is going. This is what is going to go on, and this is actually what is taking place right now as we speak. 
because the earth is being bombarded by solar flares. Look online and look up that today was one of the largest solar flares that has hit the planet Earth today. And they're going to have a meteor shower tonight between the hours of 1 and 3 o'clock in the morning. So this is no this is no joke. This is all leading up to December the 21st, 2012. Which is the end of the old man calendar. Which so, is the so end what? of the 25,000 years cycle. And the beginning of a new 25,000 year cycle. We, this is why it's no time to be afraid because we are the bearers of I'm the next 25,000 years. I'm not afraid like that, but I just, I, my heart goes out to my people when I look around and see how brainwashed a lot of us of are. Course. Of course, no doubt. My heart goes out. I've done did many of crying, I have many of crying nights you know, based on my people. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. however, your genes is your ancestry also. Matter of fact, yeah. when your ancestors are physical people that you were seeing, touching, tasting on here in this physical world, when they die, they go inside of you. And they become okay. of your ancestry or your genetic ties inside of you. That's where they're concentrated at now within you. So okay. you still have the ancestors inside of you. You, matter of fact, you are a concentration of the seven Generations on your mother's side, seven generations on your father's side. Uh huh. That is the fourteen gener. That is fourteen generations. That is symbolic to the um to um to um the fourteen pieces of all saw in which that he was cut up into. It's talking about your genealogy, your bloodline. So that's why we was talking about that. That that's why it has to start to start there. Is with you, and then it resonates outward. Everything starts with from within, not from without. When you master yourself, then you affect everything outside of you. Okay. Well, thank you for your question. We will go on to the next caller. Area code three eight six. You're on the line. Area code 386, you on the line. Area code 717, you on the line. Peace, how are you? Peace, how you doing? I'm well. Um, okay. We are on the subject of, of money, and I just purchased, uh, uh, well, bonds and stuff, and I just purchased a, a businessman's encyclopedia um, from, like, 1924, and in it, it says yes. that federal it says that federal reserve notes are redeemable for gold at the Federal Reserve Bank. Yeah, it was. Matter of fact, it was right. up until yeah, it was up until the nineties. However, as we came into nine um, eleven or uh, September um, eleven two thousand and one, it was not. Oh. As a matter of fact, they can't even find the gold in which that was once in Fort Knox because that gold has been taken by the Bank of London up under um, the um, um, royal family by the name of the um, Queen. Oh, okay. Queen Elizabeth, she has taken them. Uh, what's the name, Queen Elizabeth? Queen Victoria, I don't even know what, it, what, what her name is. But she's the one who actually is the head of the IRS. She's the head of the Social Security Administration. You can look that up also. I'm familiar with that. I just was surprised that I was under the impression that it was never redeemable because it was supposed to be dead or something. But that just surprised me to find out that it was at one point. Right, it was. It was redeemable. That's because it was called a civil um, civil. Bond certificate. Matter of fact, you used to have the word civil certificate at the bottom of the money. Or gold oh, okay. certificate at the bottom of the money. Now now you can go to the pawn shops and actually find those dollars or you know, find those bills that had silver and gold um certificate listed at the bottom of the money. Okay. But that is, no, that is um that is no longer like that. Okay, I just wanted to share that. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Area code seven six zero. You're on the line. Yeah, baby. Blessings, peace, peace, God. 
Um, I'm calling from California. I'm excellent. Right. Thank you. Thank you for you and your and your queen. The love y'all give out is so beautiful. Um, now I my home was just sold from under me at auction. Right. They didn't want it to be short sale, so it was just sold from under me, which is fine. I'm leaving here anyway. I'm actually moving back south. I've called a couple times. Um, my question is, in my spirit, as I'm coming more conscious, I have, because I used to be a loan officer. When I bought my home, I could afford my home, so I'm not somebody that, you know, got my home for nothing and none of that. I mean, I, I was in the loan business doing these loans. Um, what? Do I do now? Because in my spirit, I feel I, I was finding out the UCC information before I even became conscious, really. Something that came to me, and I found this uh, white lady, I forgot her name, Mary something. And then it led me on this long search. My question is, in my spirit, I feel like, okay, even though this house is sold and it's no longer mine and I'm relocating, that somehow if I don't do something, this debt is going to catch up with me. And it's even like my car. You know what I mean? Like I feel like you're saying they, they, I'm, you said I'm a veteran, um, and I always felt like I was on the right side of the law, so to speak, because I was still conscious, unconscious. I wasn't really checking things out. But now that I'm becoming more conscious, I have this feeling that I need to do something. I need to reclaim and take control of my straw man to free myself. Well, you're but right I don't have. Back. So right. I'm trying, well, but, but I'm relocating. I'm, I'm coming back to the south, you know, at the end of this month, and I feel lost. I feel like, okay, well, what do I do? You know, what do me and my husband do? We got two children. They're about to be 14 and 16. You know, my son, I named him a junior right after his father. You know, just all this shit is coming to me. Excuse my language. It's like, ooh, I feel like, right. I got to get. We get down like that here. All right. Well, let me give you um solutions. All right, that's that's the key because that's what we do here. All right, number one, um, have you claimed your nationality? No. Have you tied yourself back to the land? All right. Well, no. that's the first thing you have to, you have to reclamate. Um, you can go to um, www.rvbaypublications.com. That is Brother Taj and um, Sister uh, Ross Mariah Bay's website. And you can actually download the paperwork for free. Is it R as in R as in okay? Okay, as in right R. or righteous. Mm-hmm. R V as in victory. B E Y okay. publications. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, okay. You can actually go there and get the um, paperwork for free. All right. Okay. Now I am United Washington. The first nation state of the empire, Washington D.W. the Munya. Um, if you want to reclamate with us, then I can send you information. Um, of course, you know you know our phone number is two five two seven six seven five two one three. Um, that's the cell or two five two um, two five seven three five eight eight. That's the home okay. number. So um, you can get in contact with us. Um, you know. And um, if you want to reclamate um, United Washita, many want to reclamate Washita, and I don't blame y'all because that is an actual tribe that was here who states that they were Moors here in America dating back to over 100,000 years ago, and they have land ties and claims here in the Americas. Um, you know, so not just in Africa or throughout the diaspora, per um, 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 but throughout the diaspora, I should say, not just in Africa, but throughout the diaspora. So. Um, we have ties here. Now, um, so you can get in contact with us or either go to our website, www.cultural, that's C-U-L-T-U-R-A-L, cultural-freedom.com. All right, you can get on there. So now, once you um, do the um, reclamation, once you do the reclamation, what you can do then is do the UCC1 financial statement. And which that in the security box, which is down at the bottom, you will put your upper and lowercase indigenous appellation, which is um, the name which that you have chosen for yourself. And guess what? That name does not have a birth certificate attached to it, so it is not in bondage because the birth certificate is a bond, which the word bond is short for bondage. That's why you need a bondsman to bail your ass out of jail. And he writes up a worthless bond, 
just like the fiat note is worthless. And this is what they do. So you would, um, now in the debtor's box, which is in the upper box, you would put the birth name which that you was born with in all uppercase, and um, you would put Seti Q Trust after that, in which that means if you look up Seti Q Trust, which is spelled C E S T U I Q U E T R U S T, Seti Q Trust, you would read in the Black Law Dictionary. Um, fourth edition, that Thanks it on. is um, no. something huh. which that you have a benefit in. Ah, uh, you looking for me? Huh? Say it again. That's not me, brother. I don't know who that was. <laughs> oh, okay. Um. No, I don't know who that was. Um, my wife said there was um, another brother. She, I guess she beat him, but um, we'll get to him in a second. Um, okay. But um, <laughs> you would do um, that. So first you have to reclimate. Then because that name was that you reclimate under do not have a birth certificate um, attached to it, that means you are no longer in bondage. You are now free. So therefore the free person or the free natural person would now take um, control of the corporation or the official person, which is the name spoken in all caps, the straw man. And actually, you become the CEO of your corporation. You become the master of your slave. In other words, if anyone going to have to pay you, if anybody tried to um, get at that slave, they would have to pay you for getting at that slave. Oh, you want my slave to work? Okay, well, you have to pay me for it. Just like if someone wants to take your house or your car, they have to pay you for it. Why? Because you have the superior claim of lien. That's what the UCC wanted is a claim of lien. It is to help protect your property and your assets. But you just don't do a UCC one. You do also a private agreement, a security agreement, a whole harmless indemnity clause. You also do an affidavit grant power of attorney, an affidavit on revoking power of attorney, you do a denial of corporate status, which is also referred to as a negative avertment. You do a bond for discharge. You do the bill of exchange. You do a private bond set off. You do a charge back. You do a affidavit copyright, trademark, trade name. And you do a UCC1 uh, financial attachment affidavit. And when, once I do the reclamation, back. I'm sorry, brother. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, once I do the reclamation and I contact you all to uh, get the United Washington information, you all have a list of information. I know you spit it out like that, but in terms of yes, all the information is on the website. You can go to our website, www.cultural-freedom.com. That's cultural, C-U-L-T-U-R-A-L, cultural-freedom.com. You can go to the website and look up um, all of our services. Okay, and the list of these documents and what to do is on the website. The list of the documents and everything, yes. And awesome. if you have any questions, of course, um, I gave out the number. You can give us a call anytime and ask any questions. Awesome. Thank you so much. So you're welcome. Caller, you're on the line. Hey, what's going on? Uh, Greetings, brother. How you doing? All right. I just wanted to say my bad about this. That was my Queen, she came out looking oh, for right. right. You all right. You didn't but, know. Um, <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. But, um, I, you know, like before, I've been trying to tell people about uh, about the Rothschilds and everything, about right. the real main reason why uh, Lincoln was assassinated. But people look at me like, I, you know, I'd be lying, you know. And right. I was, you know, I want you to see if you can, you know, clarify with, about the Ralph Charles and they well, first. Well, Lincoln, just like, just like JFK, Lincoln and JFK was very connected because um, if you look at um, their lifespan, um, you would see that um, some say that they was the reincarnation of each other, that JFK was the reincarnation of um, Abraham Lincoln. John F. Kennedy wow. was the incarnation of um, um, Abraham Lincoln. And it's possible that that could have been. Um, but if you look at um, the similarities between their life and death, you would see so many coincidences, as they would say. The word co means two. So there's much more incidences in which that occurs. So it's not a coincidence. It's just 
multiple instances. But uh, regardless of that, um, Abraham Lincoln, just like JFK, was killed because they was going to create their own greenback outside of the Federal Reserve Bank and let Congress, which is, um, you know, the House of Representatives and um, and, um, and the Senate, the Senate. Um, help write up um, particular bills or um, in which uh, acts in which that would be passed in order to allow um, just like, based, well, it wouldn't be passed, but it was based on the Constitution, I should say, in which that the United States Treasury will actually make and print their own money instead of going outside um, to outside corporations such as the Federal Reserve Bank to do it. So this is what they was going to propose. Abraham Lincoln um, was proposing it, as well as also returning five southern states to the Moors. He himself was a Moor, according to J. Rogers, Sex and Race, Volume um, one, of course, um, and of course, according to the five Negro presidents by J. Rogers, and of course, by Sister Arsette, the six Negro presidents, Abraham Lincoln was not just a Moor, he was also a Rosicrucian, and his best friend was also another Moor by the name of Beverly Pastel Randolph, um, and who was an abolitionist who fought against slavery. So actually, um, under the cut, they was actually fighting against slavery, even though they had to put up the cover, um, um, put up the front. Um, you know, to the um, European Albion masses that um, they was um, not going to um, act on behalf of Negroes, but actually they were going to because they was going to return um, the five um, uh, five southern states that was between the Allegheny and the Rocky Mountains, of which that would have been part of the Louisiana um, proper, as they refer to it. And in other words, Washington property, and he was going to return yeah. it. And so the Masons. Um, through the Rothschilds, um, through um, the um, through those particular families, you know the thirteen um, Illuminati families, who is the Astors, yeah. the Bundys, the Collins, the Duponts, the Lees, the Morgans, the Freemans, the Russells, the Van Dimes, the Merovingian, um, 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 the Canoops, uh, the McDonalds, the Disneys, these thirteen families. Um, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the Russells, the Reynolds, these families um, are the most richest families in the world. These are um, billion and trillion dollar near families. So um, they could not um, afford that type of upset. You know, um, you know they could not allow for um, states to be ran completely by Moors. They could not allow for um, monies to be... Um, to be transferred and back through the United States Treasury without um, an outside source or um, corporation such as the Federal Reserve Bank. You know, so it, this is what happened. It happened with Kennedy. It happened with Lincoln. This is why um, they were killed or assassinated. It, yeah, because, see, uh, I was reading and I was, you know, explaining to one of my homeboys, I was telling him that uh, JFK, he had signed an uh, executive order. Right. Uh, Executive order one 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 zero it was one one zero 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 one right okay yeah and um you know it was mm -hmm. like he signed that and then once he did his little parade thing in Texas you know they just got him and I was like man I said that's that's the real reason why you know but I I just pre I, I appreciate you shed shedding some light on that for me yeah. Well, I, um, well, this is what we do know is that um, the information is right and exact. We know that's the reason why they actually was um, assassinated um, because um, of them doing things outside of the Illuminati, as we would say, you know. So um, you're absolutely correct, brother. Um, if they think that you're crazy, wait till they start seeing um, until they start seeing how deep this rabbit hole really goes, then they really would think they had a damn major. And, and you know what? I just have one more question, man. I I had like, like caught the buddy in of it about the solar flares and stuff. I was trying mm -hmm. to touch on that for me right quick, you know, so if I can go back and uh, you know, so read up on it. So. Mhm. Mm hey, hit that last one, brother. Oh yeah, I was just I was just trying to uh, get you to retouch on that uh, solar flares and stuff. About oh, what's going yeah, well, the solar flare activity in which that is taking place today was a Class M, which is a mega flare. 
um, which is um, the largest flares. You have solar flares, um, which that is ejected, which is solar plasma, which is ejected from the surface of the sun, uh, what is called corona mass ejection, the CMEs. Um, the flare in which that was um, bombarded the planet Earth today was a mega flare. You have class um, C, class X, and class M. And um, I think class M is the largest one, which is a mega flare. So um, that is the um, type of flare in which that hit the planet Earth today. And which that is causing a lot of um, disruptions within electronics. So uh, we're lucky to even be online tonight, okay? Wow. Yeah, well, I, I appreciate it. Of course, we got um, the meteorite shower coming on tonight between 1 and 3, so check that out too. A lot of energy coming into the planet, um, towards the planet Earth, Fox. So go outside and get you some of that energy, you know, because um, yeah, that man. energy we're going to use, you know, to destroy this, um, this system and bring in a new world, the real world. Yeah, man, man, I, man, right I appreciate here. all the information, man. I, I, I've been following you all for, you know, since about a year now, man. I appreciate, I appreciate that, brother. Appreciate, appreciate you. Continue listening to us. Check us out. All right, I sure will. All right, area code three hundred one. You're on the line. Oh, excuse me, 313, you're on the line. Hello. Hey, yes, peace. How you doing? Peace. Um, peace. How are you tonight? Go, you put well. down a lot, of give, a lot of good information. I'm enjoying it and I'm loving it, and it's all truth. Um, my question to you, everything you see in is the truth, and... Um, I've been on this path since 2000. Um, my um, my loved one kind of put me in that direction um, in being incarcerated. But when you were speaking on the forum, Ashabo 90 and 91, I was just wondering, could you elaborate on that? Um, who who does it go to? That's where I was stuck um, at. You would, take those, you would take those forms and go down to the Register of Deeds, or do the clerk right? Do you go to the register of these, and um, they will um, be put within um, on record, just like the UCC is put on record. Um, if you have a uh, real estate um, code attached to it, which is a parcel number, they will take you right there at the county. And if not, you have to go through the state level. You can also go through the state, which is the Secretary of State, also. All right, but um, it is best to go to the county and then move it up to the Secretary of State. So those are the two oh, places. Oh, so in other words, I would file it at the county. You would have to file it at the Register of Deeds at the county recorder, yes. And then you would take it to the state level, which is the Secretary of State. Right. You can get it authenticated in a pot still. Um, any of your um, particular um, affidavits, you can get it um, um, authenticated in a pot still. This goes more so for the reclamation um, information um, um, than it does for the UCC. But um, once they um, verify it, um, and once they say um, that it is a um, good UCC, you know, then, um, of course, um, that goes within their records and files. And um, I think the UCC is good for um, 99 years. Of course, um, oh, you yeah. want to probably but, do but that every Michigan, five years. But in Michigan, I thought they had to change it every five years. I know you right. can. That's, um, what just, that's what I just, that's what I just been saying, that it would be good if you change it every five years. Oh, okay, because they play in hardball here in Michigan. Oh, yeah, um, I know. I know. I heard. I heard. Well, yeah. that's because so many more to put names on judges and lawyers and different other things up there um, in that area. That's the reason why for that. they scared. <laughs> Their credit has stopped. When you put a lien on an individual that's just like you working at the IRS itself, and their credit stops, they won't be able to do anything with their credit cards. Oh, And then if you okay. take that to the comp controller, if you take that information to the cop controller, guess what happens to their bond if they are bonded? Really? They become a liability for the um, municipalities. So then more than likely they end up getting fired or getting dismissed or either suspended until pending um, further um, consideration or further um, prosecution. Oh, Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, that makes sense now. I understand. Oh, yeah. I have one more question oh, yeah. before I let you go. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, it was two. One was um, you were saying something about the queen owns the um, right the, the right. IRS right. and the social, right. and the she social owns security. The social security administration. 
really. Mm -hmm. So yep. uh, my yeah, question to you about that, mm -hmm. how do you get your Social Security early? How, how can you, you know, what's already been put in, how can you get it out now? Well, after after you don't work a particular amount of years, the IRS actually will send you a form asking you, do you want your Social Security now or when? <laughs> And you actually tell them that, well, if you want it now. They'll actually send you a letter. I've done gotten, um, the fact that I haven't worked for um, anyone within the last um, 12 years, they have actually sent me a letter from the IRS asking me, do I want um, my Social Security for all the years that I've worked thus far? <laughs> and I'm only 42. <laughs> Okay. Hello? You made it out. I didn't hear that. Hello? 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 Yes. Please. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay. Did you hear my answer? No, it blanked out. You blanked out twice, and I didn't hear it. Okay. Did, what point did you hear? All I heard was you said something about you could that they sent you a letter to get for you okay, to get you yours. Know. Right. Right. Well, I haven't worked for anyone in twelve years. I haven't worked for any corporation, anybody for twelve years. I work for myself. All right. So, um, being that I haven't worked um, for that long, the um, the IRS has actually sent me information. Recording all the years that I have actually worked and actually do I want the money back from that? And I'm only 42. So um, it, it's based on the amount of time in which that you don't work in which that the IRS actually will send you um, particular um, IRS forms in which, that will ask, um, in which that they will ask you, do you want your money um, back for the years in which that you have already worked? Oh, okay. Now, another good thing in order to get into is... Um, if you have credit cards, is learning the signs of the 1099 OID, in which that uh -huh. actually um, every credit transaction or every um, bill in which that you pay, you can actually um, add all of that up and tally all of that up at the end of the year and get back um, the monies in which that you invested, in which that you um, invested in all those products or items, in which that you had to go towards paying if it was rent or mortgage or um, if it was um, any credit card, um, if you went out to the movies or whatever you use the credit card with, if you keep the credit and not use debit, you don't want to use debit, you always want to use credit. Credit. So oh, okay. Counter, right. So when they ask you at the counter, do you want this to be debit or credit, even though it's a debit card, they give you still the option for it to be credit. You want the credit. So that at the right. end of the year, you can do a 1099 OID, which is the original um, issuer discount and wish that you can get right. back the monies from the IRS for um, everything which that you spent out that year. Oh, they yeah, give it back to you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. When you fill you. out so that that's form. Also one of, that's also one of the ways of what we would call reparations. Right, <laughs> right. That, that's a yearly reparation. Right. <laughs> the reason why, because <laughs> the bank, the reason why, because the bank does fractionalization, as I said earlier. They mark everything up ten, um, 10 times the value. So they have already made their um, value off of it nine times. So they can give you back the, the original um, 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 amount in which that was spent out because you are the original issuer of the discount. Hmm. Okay. That makes sense. In other words, anything goes back to you anyway. Right. As it should All right. be. As mm -hmm. it should be. Um, exactly. One last thing. I wanted to know, how mm -hmm. do you get your name entirely out of the system? No, no, you don't get your name entirely out the system. What you do, this, this, this is the thing. You can change your name and never put your name in the security administration, never put your name um, in the birth certificate um, administration. Oh, okay. I will use so my by, by doing that, By doing that, guess what? Your name is out of the system because they don't have oh, a birth okay. certificate or a security card based on the name of that you have chosen for yourself. But, okay. yeah, you might have credit cards in that name. You might have debit cards in that name. You might have um, um, other contracts in that name. Mm -hmm. 
They, they can't stop you from that. Okay. Because I guess. why you think if they take you down to the police, um, um, to the police, um, the first thing they ask you, do you have an alias? Why is that one of the first questions? Do you because have? They want to know your. They want to. They want to know your other given name. name. Right. You right. have another name that you go by. Because right. it is not against the law for you to have another name. Right. And then if you go down to the register of deeds, you can do what is called common law name correction and actually put that name on the county. So if anybody asks you, do you have a name, or actually you can do also a fictitious business name and operate under that name and get an EIN number with it. And I right. name of the business. Mm. Okay. Look, 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 we know. Look, look. We we know the solutions here. Keep listening. We're gonna keep giving them out. Because okay, I sure will. We got to get free. We got to get free. We can't keep okay. doing at the um behest of these of these beasts. We got to get out. I'm with you. Especially I'm with you. Ooh, I love it. Right? Keep up the good work. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, All right. Out. All right. Peace, peace and love. love. All right. Mm-hmm. Peace and love. Eric Cole, 901, you're on the line. 910, excuse me, you're on the line. Come on, 910, you're on the line. Okay, what's the last numbers? Oh, hey, it's you, brother. You're on the line. The it's all right. Yeah, it's you. We're going to go to you. You're on the line. Peace out. What's the numbers on the 910? I don't know, Hello? but... Yeah, it's all right. You on the line? We won't go to you. You ask the questions. We got you. Is this 910? Yes, it is. It's Brother Wednesday. Okay, yes, yeah, Brother Wednesday. How you doing? Hey, Zach, come on, man. You know the deal. <laughs> Keep me up, okay. man. Okay. <laughs> I, um, I had a question about... um, and, and peace to you and yours, brother. Hey, um, I have a question yeah, about... Guys. Uh, Moorish presidents during the when this country was divided in colonial, uh, confederate, right. and public. Now, where did these Moors come from? Were they already here, or were they um, brought? Or they, they, were they, they, they were misnomer Indians, but the darker so-called Indians was on the eastern seaboard and in the south and in the northern area. Along the um the um the Michigan lakes, all right. So you had blacks in the north along the Michigan lakes, blacks all the way in the south, blacks along the eastern seaboard. This is where the darker so-called Indians were located at, who look just like you and me. Matter of fact, they're all us. We are the women that's up there right now. The Empress states that eighty-five percent of our bloodline was already here, and only four and four hundred years ago. Only 15% was brought from Africa who mixed in with us. So you my 85% and then 15%, which, large, which number is larger? That means that the 15% became consumed by the 85%. So, yes, we have African genes within us. We always had that because we are African people originally. But we haven't been to Africa, the majority of us, in millions of years. And we're talking about before the continental drift. All right, now the continental drift... Uh, so supposedly, according to scientists, occurred 200 million years ago. Well, guess what? We got footprints. All right? We got shoes with bread. We have metal bells in which that was right in Dorchester, Massachusetts. Now, you can get this from um, the book um, Forbidden Archaeology by Michael Cremo, in which that dates back to over 600 million years ago right here in the Western Hemisphere. So we've been here a long time, brother. So um, if we're talking about um, how long we've been here, um, we might have to go back as far as um, um, on the Bilash Muhammad's date that there is no set birth record. <laughs> okay? But um, other than that, um, the, um, the presidents which that we were talking about came from the Lenape uh, or the Washington tribes in which that was here. Um, along the um, south and the western and the um, eastern seaboard, who helped structure a deal with the Rosicrucian Quaker by the name of William Penn, who set up Philadelphia 
um, the person who designed Philadelphia is the same person who designed Washington, D.C. His name was Judge Ben Ben Bay, who is known as um, Benjamin Banneker. He's also known as Ben Bay Emmanuel Muali, a Moor. And he was a prince of the Lenape, which is a northern Washington, um, northern east, northeast Washington tribe from out of the Philadelphia and Delaware area. They were known as the Delaware Moors. They also had connection to the Ben Ishmaelites. They also had connection to the Nanakote Moors. They also were referred to as the Melungeons. You can look up all these key words and you'll find that these are the black people part of what they refer to as the Iroquois tribe or confederation in which they help put together um, the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, um, which is one of the four constitutions. Remember, there's four constitutions, Articles of Association, Articles of Confederation, Declaration of Independence, and the Constitution for the United States of America slash the Bill of Rights, which is the um, ten, um, the first ten, in which that applies um, to us uh, or can be applied um, to us. So um, these were the um, people from the Lenape, um, the Northern East Washington tribes um, here um, from out of those particular states who helped put together uh, the Iroquois Confederation that they also misnomed and referred to us as, as the Iroquois. The word Iroquois is the language in which that was spoken. It is not um, the actual tr um, name of the tribe. So that's another misnomer in which that they have done in order to throw us off. But these are black people, Moors. It was Moors. There was black and Moors. That's now the okay. other question I that this is, uh, and the other, I have one other question. What year was it where we took? They had some kind of act come out where um we uh the people in America agreed to it and it, that was supposed to on the we, our I, own I black court. That. Oh, you talking about the Casula court? Well, um, we had our own um. Right, we had we had our own court system, which was referred to as the Casula Court, but that was abolished by Dwight Eisenhower, who also was a Moor. His mother was a Moor, um, and you can look that information up. He was part of the five Negro presidents. He was also um, mentioned in um, the six um, black presidents by Sister Orsett. All right, so Eisenhower is the one who um, abolished in 1956 our court system. The Consular Courts. You go to Black's Law Dictionary, Fourth Edition. It specifically would say that the Consular Courts, and then in parentheses, Morocco existed in the United States up until 1956, until it was abolished. So we had our own court system until 1956. Right. What happened is that in 1955, we started following Martin Luther the King, and we accepted civil rights instead of actually human rights. So therefore, our court system was closed down because it was no longer under the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It was no longer under um, international law because we accepted we accepted nation law. Okay, nation law I mean. do not supersede international law because international law, which is the laws of nations, is what governs all the nations on the planet. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Let's go on to the next caller. Please, that. Caller 803. Caller, area code 803. You're on the line. Eight oh three, you're on the line. All right. All right, um, we have a little bit of technical difficulties, but let's continue on with the information. Okay, we got it coming up. Um, 804, area code 804, you're on the line. Yeah, brother, you just mentioned in the book, um, Forbidden, Forbidden Archaeology. I just need the um, author's name. Forbidden Archaeology by Michael Cremo, C-R-E-M-O, Michael Cremo. I appreciate that, Pam. And L. Thompson, T H O M T S O N. Consider it again, my phone was breaking up. L. Thompson, L as in the letter L, Thompson, T H O M T S O N. All right, I appreciate that, brother. 
All right. Peace. Peace. Area code 313, you're on the line. Yeah, um, I was just trying to uh, piggyback off the caller uh, and the conversation about um, just a couple of calls ago when you were talking about Eisenhower and they yes. canceled out on the Council of Court in 55. Well, I mean, it's happening. No, I no, no. Um, they abolished our court system, which is called the Consular Courts, in 1956 because we accepted the Civil Rights Movement by Martin Luther oh. King in 1955. So we yes. forced the human rights in order to go and follow civil rights. And Malcolm yes, already yes. told us that you can't be um, um, you can't be um, seen as a human being unless first you have human rights. And then once you have human rights, the civil rights will come automatically. But not until you have human rights. No. Okay, and um, I'm kind of in the same ballpark that you are in, but I would just like to get some information gathering on, since you did speak on the uh, RV Bay publications, which is the, the docs from uh, Taj and I watched the talk. You know, they sent out some information to the Library of Congress on the, that information that CM Bay filed in 50... Yeah, well, that, that, is if you, that is if you are with the Great Seal, National Association of Morris Affairs. That organization is ran by Yusef Rami, who is the sultan. All right, Yusef Rami Bay, he is the sultan of the Great Seal, National Association of Morris Affairs. It's supposed to be ran as a government. So if you want documentation or paperwork, you actually have to go through him in order to get his seal um, put upon your paperwork as being part of the Great Seal National Association of Morris Affairs. He has no Which is um, a branch out from um, CM Bay. So um, we do, would you know, <clears throat> in a sense, the authenticity of it, the legitimacy of it? Um, is Once it, again, if they... If once again, if they have not gone to you stuff on any day, then um, they are role great seal members, actually. And I can't even say if they're members. You self on me would not say that they are actual members because they did not go through the sultan. They did not go through the proper channels. They did not go through the hierarchy. And he sits at the helm, and he is the sultan of the great seal National Association of Mortgage Affairs. And this is what he told me personally. Because I'm the Prime Minister Alpha Ray in the Great Seal National Association of Morris Affairs, which means I'm the Prime Minister and the international spokesman for the nation for the Great Seal um, National Association of Morris Affairs. Right. Okay. So you say you have to do some more so research. Is the, is the information authentic? Yes. If you go through um, um, the various channels and send your information through the Library of Congress, then yes, it is put on file um, there at the Library of Congress. That means that you have patent your information. And you cut just out like again. A book. Yeah, just like a book. A book is patent when it goes through the Library of Congress, is it not? Yes, it yes. It's Well, your documentation will become copyrighted and patent through the Library of Congress. And, yes, that is the process in which that he set up. And, yes, it is authentic. Okay, so that's more artillery for your uh, protection or your... Let, 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 let me explain. There's, there's different channels that you can go through, many channels. Let, let me explain. All right, you can go through the county recorder, which is the register of deeds. You can go through the clerk of superior court in the civil filing section of the courthouse. You can go through the secretary of state, right? Yeah. All right. They get it apostilled and authenticated. Your documents are apostilled and authenticated. You can go through the Library of Congress in order to get your information copywritten if you're a Great Seal member. All right? And all, either you can put it in a publication, such as a magazine, such as a pamphlet, such as a um, newspaper or article. Mm. Yes. And put it in the public form. In other words, you can take it out and put it on in a bulletin at Walmart. Or you can take it out and put it in the bulletin um, at the courthouse. At the courthouse, the county, exactly. Right. So there's many ways in which you can do it. It's just simply getting your information on public record. 
That's what all of this is about. It's public record. That's what you want the information at. Okay, so that is our right. authenticity. Why you go to the county? The reason why you go to the county is because your ancestors created the county level. That's why um, the person over the county is called the sharif, the sheriff, which is an Arabic word, which means noble in Arabic. The yeah. belief. That's why he's also known in court as the belief, the bay, which is the governor, the ruler. So this is the reason why you go to the county, because we set up the county. All right, if you go and do any research on the first president of the United States when, uh, up under the Articles of Confederation by the name of um, John Hansen, yeah. of course that wasn't his real name, that was his um, store man name, um, but he, um, if you um, actually um, do any research, he actually um, helped set up the counties um, as far as um, that particular um, system. He also helped set up the United States Treasury. He also helped set up the postal service. And remember, these are all things that we just mentioned in the um in um in the hour before when we was breaking down who owns the prison um corporations and the conspiracy behind all of this. Oh, definitely, definitely. And how they're using our black people as a commodity. And I would imagine right. that's what is the I would imagine that's what's the breakdown of all of the public school systems for what it may be called, why they have to... Oh, yeah. Debt, right. right. Uh, keep, well, you have to keep, add in the lottery, the educational system. Um, you have to add in a whole lot because they're all um, part of that same funding system of the prison. Um, the, you know the place on your car, which is through the DMV, as you would think is through the DMV, actually comes through a private corporation called Ward Incorporated in which that actually makes the place for the states in which they use the prison system to do and make the plates through. So the plates on your car is made through the prison system. Wow. You're not leaving anything unturned. So this whole thing is okay. a fault. <laughs> <laughs> to make a long story short, exactly. And also, um, after you have uh, pretty much everything in place, I know you had spoke on... Um, Creating a, uh, I'm not sure. Did you say a DUNS number or EIN number for your? Uh, or would you, you do what's it's called a fictitious, fictitious business name? And from that fictitious, fictitious business name, yeah, listen, you can take that fictitious business name and actually get a EIN number on it, which is an employer's identification number on it, and that means that you can actually get credit cards in that business name. Which and you're you not get a credit limit. You would not get a credit limit like your name, like your name regularly, because this is a business now. So that means you would get credit limits up to ten thousand dollars or more. And you're national, huh? I said, in your national. No, it's not your national. It could be your name spelled in all caps, which become your fictitious business name. In other words, the same name that they're using in order to make money off of, you can use it too and make it your slave and make it work for you. That's what slaves do, don't they? Don't, 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 shit, if you had a slave, don't you work on them? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> what would this country well, that's be? What, that's, that's what you do with your name. If your name is the straw man, which is the slave, the debtor, then you make the debt work for you so that you can get relief off the debt. That's what they're doing. They're using you, your name in all caps, the straw man, to relieve the debt of this country and to get monies from other countries on the debt. And saying that if the debt is not paid off, then guess who pays the debt? Your physical body does because that name that's attached to your physical body is the name that they have in all caps, which they didn't tell you was a bond at birth, which was worth over a million dollars. Right, right. So virtually yeah. you'd establish another EIN number. Exactly. And you use that given name as the name in which that you um, can work Doing your business. That is your now that is your business name. And anybody who um 
violates that business name because you do a copyright trademark trade name on that name. But anyone who violates that name agreement, you can actually go after them for infringement rights, copyright and infringement. Yes, and you can actually fact. say that in your copyright, you state that um, anyone who violates this part, each occurrence is worth $1 million. So each occurrence is worth $1 million. So they um, use your name three different occasions, then that's $3 million. And you send them an invoice or a bill for the violations of such acts. If they don't answer, then you send them a default notice. They don't answer, you send them another default notice. They don't answer, you make it to the federal court case, and you tell them, look, I've been, um, there's two default notices already. Um, I've already um, contacted these individuals. Now it's time for a suit. Right, administrative process. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Uh, Interesting. You're not caught up in in one way to do it. We can tell you many ways to do it. We're not caught up in one way. You know, a lot of these groups are caught up into one way of doing it, and they think that they have the answers, but really they just um, shooting shit in the dark. Yes, okay. We're going to go on to the next caller, brother. Thank All right, thanks, Doc. Back. Okay, peace. All right. Okay, Mr. Boyd, can you have 905? Um, 904, you're on the line. 904, you're on the line. I, I hear somebody on here. Um, who's on the line? Uh, yeah, please, you're on the line. Please. All right. Uh, well, let's go over something else then until we can get this line back up. All right, we told you about www.qsip, that's Q-U-S-I-P dot com. Look that information up. Um, there's two main outlets, one in Chicago and New York, and you will find out um, who their transfer agents are, and then you can um, actually track down the trade. Um, you can even find out if funds are being embezzled off the account. Now, check this out. You can also set up an account with Fidelity.com, www.fidelity.com. On that website, you can actually, um, once you set up the account, you can actually put in your birth certificate number, the bond number, or the um, which, um, your state certificate file number, I should say. Um, you can put in your Social Security number front or back, and the information on your bond, which is your birth certificate, will be pulled up and it will tell you how much you are being auctioned for on the stock market. In Damn. other words, how much monies are being um how much money is on that bond, all right? Uh, we did a brother, and his bond was like up to $283 million in birth certificate being traded. And when they do these um, bonds, they bunch the bonds together, okay? So this is what's going on. Um, you got another call. Um, call you on the line? You hear me? Mr. Louis, line? Yes. How you doing, brother? You hear me? Yes, we can hear you, brother. All right. I- I'm wondering, in regards to the right to travel, like uh, what what documents, like uh, like original documents, like perhaps like the Constitution, Bill of Rights, etc., um, can go to prove that yeah, well, that right. In, in the in the um, right to travel, you have to use um, um, the information within the four constitutions: Articles of Association, Articles of Confederation, Declaration of Independence, and the Constitution for the United States of America. Um, particularly, being that the United States. Um, Constitution of um, the Constitution for the United States of America does not specifically say that you have the right to travel. What you would use is the Declaration of Independence, where it says that you have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And then also in the Articles of Confederation, it does state that you have the right to travel. It does state that you have the right to travel. So you can mm-hmm. use the information from those four constitutions. Then you can also use the United States Supreme Court case law, such as. Um, Wingfield versus Fielder, which states that you do not have to have a driver license, force insurance, or um, registration. 
you could also use City of Chicago versus um, Coast um, Company of Chicago versus the City of Chicago, and use that United States Supreme Court case law on um, which states that you do not have to have a um, a license. Okay, and then you can also use um, statutes, um, statute information. You know, even though it's colorful as they are, you can still use it if it correlates to the Constitution. Of course, if the statutes do not correlate to the Constitution, then um, they are as if laws in which that, um, laws passed, which you never had to abide by anyway. So you will want to definitely use um, statutes in which that correlates with that. In some state statutes, it would state that um, regardless if you have insurance or not, it would not show um, that you're guilty or innocent um, in a court of law. In other words, they can't even raise up the issue about if you have insurance or not for, mm -hmm. for a car. So um, a lot of um, states do state that within their, um, their statutes, within the particular um, mm -hmm. general statutes of the state. So you will have to, and also use the um, state constitution also, all right, because the, all the state constitutions um, correlate with the um, Constitution of the United States or the Constitution for the United States of America where it states that you have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness or the Declaration of Independence. So uh, most of the states' um, Constitution states that. So you would use all of that information and you would put that within an affidavit form. Um, you would write affidavit at the top, of course, affidavit of truth, affidavit of facts, or affidavit of nationality, or affidavit of citizenship, you know, whatever you write writing it um, up for, affidavit of the right to travel. And we just use the various laws um, based on the information which that you do your research and study on. So, brother, one more, one more question, if I could. What, what if what if they try and say that you're a you're a citizen of you know that you're a U.S. citizen or you're a you're a citizen of the state of Connecticut, and according to the the uh, Connecticut state statutes, all Connecticut citizens or residents are required to you know hold a, dri well, a driver's license with. Well, it's, well, a privilege doesn't supersede during, the right. During, during the time, I wasn't. I wasn't either. I, I belonged to right. a... Well, um, well, well this, this, this is the key. A privilege does not supersede a right. Yeah, correct. But they have given us our privileges. A driver's mm -hmm. license is a privilege. Mm -hmm. A marriage certificate or license is a privilege. All right? These are privileges. So these privileges do not supersede a right. Ask them to show you where did you waive your rights. What document mm. did you waive your rights on? What contract do they have in which they verify that you waive your rights? Mm -hmm. They would say none, or they don't mm -hmm. have it, or they can't prove it. Well, that's part mm -hmm. of your jurisdiction issue. In mm -hmm. order for to proceed in any legal case, you must have a jurisdiction. You must have subject matter and person matter. If you can't yeah. prove subject matter and you can't prove person matter, then guess what? The court can't proceed because you got to prove both in a court. Of yeah. Court. If you can't prove yeah, either, then guess what? The proceeding stops. What What happened was, you know, I, ha I had a, you know, we had we had our own, I had my own plate, you know what I'm saying? And uh, these these officers just, quote unquote officers, just 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 saw me, you know what I'm saying? And they basically just pulled me over, ripped me out of my car, and then put a, a giant bond on me, you know what I'm saying? So I stayed in jail for two months. And then, that, and then they, then, then they, when they found a social security card, you know, what I'm saying they, they, they claim me as a strong man. Did you, man already, they're, did they're, you have your documentation already filed at the county? Uh, I don't, I don't believe so. I was, I was up here in, in Hartford, um, you know. Right. With, well, uh, the, but you, you, you have to have information filed at the county, and then you mm -hmm. also have to, before you even go to any court matter, you have to um, send forth your affidavits prior to you going, and mm -hmm. you have to send forth a special notice or restrictive notice or restrictive appearance and you have to send that to court prior to you going. If mm -hmm. you don't do that, then they don't know who you are. They'll say you Negro, black, and colored. You haven't mm -hmm. made a distinction. So mm -hmm. you want to also send a affidavit denial of status, corporate status. You also want to send a negative avertment. You also might want to do a letter of rogatory. There are many things in which that you can do in order to verify who you are and your status. Mm -hmm. Your nationality, and they will not be able to proceed. All I right. promise you, because I've done had dozens and dozens and dozens of court cases mm -hmm. with traffic matters and have beat them. 
Man, I, I hope I can you more than beat them. You can also, every suit that they send you, that's a suit. A ticket is a suit. They're suing mm-hmm. you. So guess mm-hmm. what you do? You send in a counter suit. Yeah, they 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 said you know this this one officer he he reached in you know because he told me to turn turn off my vehicle and I said no I said give, you know give give me my papers back from the temple you know what I'm saying he and he just reached in my car and turned and took out and tried to take my keys out and I and I grabbed tried to grab my keys from his hand he called that assault to a, a, an officer and now that's that's they're trying to charge me trying to say I assault an officer you know yeah so, well we know another brother yeah. who um got those same charges and mm-hmm. um the officer got fired. Once he put in that countersuit claim, and he listed the violations, even according to not just the Constitution, but also the United States Supreme Court case law, um, the USC codes, down to um, the um, state statutes, the officer ended up getting fired because he became a liability. Beautiful, beautiful. You have to file your documentation. You have to make a public uh, record. You I'm have good. to do I'm a gonna, paper I'm trail. Gonna, I'm gonna do that, brother. I'm gonna do that. I'm I'm, uh, I'm gonna be talking to a uh, uh, sister uh, t- uh, tomorrow. Actually, she's got she has a conference and uh, a phone conference. I'm gonna see okay. see if I can look into that documentation. I appreciate the the conversation. Okay. All right. All right. Peace. You have to do it. All right. Now, peace and blessings. Caller seven one eight. You're on the line. Come on, caller seven one eight. Peace, peace. How you doing, Alan? Peace. Doing well. Yes. Um, about the 1099 OID. Um, you said to use credit. Um, is is a secure line of credit the same as credit? Um, I would think so. As long as it's credit. As long as it's credit, right? Right. Anything that you're doing purchases off of, you know, what I'm saying, can be used as part of the 1099 OID process. Okay. And you which also is, said, um, filed during, um, the, which is filed during the month of October through March. Wait, wait, repeat that again. The 1099 OID is filed during October through March. October through, oh, okay, okay. Through yeah, March. And I also have a question about the, um, you know, the Social Security. I, I, I hear a lot of times that, um, you know, you could actually dissolve it. You know, is that true? That you can do what? That you could dissolve it, like you know, you you you, you know, like like cash it in. In other words. Oh, but yeah. Well, I mean, if you do the dissolution process, yeah, um, that is possible. But you have to state that um, that straw man died. Oh. Okay, That's how they okay. dissolved it. Okay. Right. But um but um I'm not telling people to do that. But I'm just saying that that's how um it is stated how it is done. Okay. And I I also heard um about the birth certificate, you know, that it's worth money. So um yes, I heard that in Canada. Well well you you want you want you you won't want to this this is the thing. The birth certificate is tied to a trust. What you want is to be able to discharge off of that birth certificate, discharge your debts, your student loans, your mortgage, your car, you know, even um, water bills and electrical bills, all these things can be discharged or it's a different value. But you can do it off of the birth certificate. The birth certificate is um, is the primary um, negotiable instrument. That that okay. is what you want to use, and that's so how you, what, and that's what you want to write all your negotiable instruments off of. Actually, is um, your promissory notes, your um, your bonds, your money orders, all of those things want to be written off of that birth certificate, that state file number, and also your all social security card. Um, without the dashes, which is your exemption number, and then the number on the back, which is your IMF, which is your prepaid levy bond number, which is attached to the 12 Federal Reserve Banks. I mean, how do you go about um, doing that? Like, you know, after um, you, number I, one, I, you, know, you, you have to activate your, you have to activate your UCC trust account. How you do that through the United States Secretary of Treasury, which is Timothy Geithner. 
Okay. You have to do, you have to do the UCC one process. When you say seven seven oh eight nine five, you're next. Then that's where you get. Okay. Peace. Peace. Hello. 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 Yes, please. Hello? Yes, please. Hello. Yes, please. We can hear you. You want to hear me? Yes, we can. Hello? Yes, we can hear you, please. Um, my name is Cheryl and I was calling because my cousin was telling me about your radio station um about imprisonment, false imprisonment. Yes. Yes. Well I have a son, he's eighteen years old and he went to court and they gave him a life sentence and they don't have no evidence on him. Well, they gave him eight counts of carjacking. Eight counts of carjacking, and the only thing they have is his word against theirs, the people that was carjacked. Right. Now, the problem is they don't, have no fingerprints. they don't have no fingerprints on him. They don't have no guns. Right. Has he gone? It doesn't matter. Does he? Has he gone before the judge? He done went before he the judge. He's already got right? Right. He he he, that means he contracted with them. Right. I don't understand the contract. Well, Hold on. That means he's contracted with them. That means he understood the charges being brought up against him. That means he was held liable for the bond attached to that statute that he violated. But how did he violate it when they don't have nothing because, saying that he... Because he said he understood it. No. When he stood in front of that judge and the judge asked him, did he understand the charges being brought up against him, he shook his head or he said yes. He said no. And at that mo and at that moment he was held liable. In other words, if he didn't pay through the bond to discharge that debt or accept that or, or accept that for value conditionally, then that means he will have to serve the term with his physical body in prison. So his bond was like thirty thousand dollars. But they wanted three three thousand for him to be bonded out. You're right. Well they want three hundred thousand dollars, exactly. So guess what? So now you have to track down the bond. You have to go through Fidelity.com, www.fidelity.com, and set up a an account and track down uh-huh. the bond. You put in his birth certificate number, which is his state file um, number, or his um, social security number, and the information on his bond will show up. Okay. Give me a consequence. What you said I had to do. And also, you can email us, and we can send you some information. You can email us at w um, at Royal House R O Y A L Royal House seven 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 at gmail dot com. That's R O Y A L House H O U S E seven 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 at gmail dot com. Royal House seven 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 at gmail dot com. You can email okay. us there, and we'll send you some information on which that will help you um, understand this information better and what you need to do. Okay, because I'm, I'm going to do that as soon as possible. Okay, right. what about this new law that they got about um, um, they suspending your license if you don't pay court fines? All right. Well, um, most traffic matters are infractions. Right. All right. Now, they're saying that it's a crime because they're bringing you to criminal court. So, number one, Show me the injured party. If you can't show me an injured party or someone who is damaged by me, who was damaged by me, and if there's no sworn affidavit attached to that complaint or that suit, then guess what? They have not. They don't have a leg to stand upon because it's invalid. Hmm. All right. Okay. So. Also, um, the child needs to um, um, declare nationality also. And then have to have a UCC one financial statement on him, and he has to actually do an affidavit of grant and power of attorney to you so that you have control over um, the matters as far as going down to the register of deeds and having the paperwork filed for him and on his behalf and then going to the criminal division and putting that information into his case in order to bring up a new hearing or to set an appeal. Oh. 
What you say the name of that is called again? Which which one? <laughs> You talking about the UCC, the Uniform Commercial Code, or, the, or him doing his nationality? Because all of them are important in that particular matter. Because he has to become the secure party, or rather, you going to become the secure party on his behalf, because he will have to do an affidavit of grant power of attorney to you. In other words, an affidavit grant of power of attorney is nothing more than an affidavit in which that states that all trustees have been fired, and the only one who can work on his behalf is you. All right? We're going to go to the next caller. 312, you're on the line. 312. Peace, peace, peace. Peace, how you doing, brother? Peace. Peace. Peace, Thanks, brother Abdul, Abdul Noah. Um, I came in, unfortunately, I'm um, just going to take care of some business. I came in on a call, uh, you know, majority of blog talk show, but I came in on a part of... The, it's all right. You can go back and listen to it on the whole thing in all time, brother. It's all right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, no, but actually, <clears throat> actually, so I got you on the pause. Well, actually, what, as far as the, how do you check the, see the, uh, the process of how much the birth, your birth certificate bond is worth? I went on Fidelity one time trying before someone informed me about right. it. Right. Well, Fidelity has shut down from you being able to go on it free. You have to set up an actual account with them, and then you'll be able to do it. Oh, you have to set up an account. It's nothing. Uh, right. Nothing you have to set up an account. Nothing, it's nothing really intricate as far as setting an account up, is it? Like, you know, as far no, as it don't. Require. It don't cost anything to set up an account, but you have to set up an account in order to do that. So it don't cost anything. So you just have to put your information in there. And um, you can put on um, your state file number in there, or either your um, your social security number front or back, and um, you'll be able to get the information on your bond and who has it and how much you're worth right now and how much you actually being traded for in the stock market. Right. One last question before I let you go, bro. You also was talking about um, something about someone using your name uh, um, as far as um, you're charging them a million dollars or uh, uh, something of that nature. I don't, right, I don't that's know. copyright I can't infringement. Right. You have to do a copyright trademark trade name on your fictitious business name, which is also in your name spelled in all caps. And you can get an EIN number on that. And um, what you would do is is um, be able to work through that fictitious business name. That would become your slave. That would be um, the slave in which that makes you your money. In other words, okay. anybody who wants to come after that slave will have to pay you first for any violations in which that you're claiming that that slave has done to you. Well, show me the sworn affidavits attached to any um, to any of those suits. Show me where that slave um, has filed um, particular information that's sold. Then that means you accept negotiable instruments, and I accept for value um, the matter, and um, we want um, we want discharge it, and we want to go for closure and settlement of this case. Man, I got to talk. I got I got your email address. I definitely want to email you, bro, and uh, man, uh, and talk to you. And one last, thing I said I was like another just popping off, and I'm I'm, I'm going after this. Uh, if you get you know kidnapped, and you get you you, you know, and you're doing time in a, one of their uh, cells by the policy forces, and um, how do you how is it that you charged uh, uh, by the time? And if if it's you know it's a uh, Illegal, illegal arrest, as they state. How do you, you know, uh, uh, get them? You know, as far as um, they're violating you, your rights. Oh, you mean uh, for you a, charge for later a lawsuit? Well, yeah, you I'm, mean I'm for forced like, imprisonment? We, well, yeah, I'm saying like for every hour, something that something. I heard a brother was talk. I can't think of the brother's right. name. Well, that, that is true. Hour. You can um, right? You can you can um, get them for every um, minute in which that you are spent within jail. And a minute will cause a particular amount of price, right? Is that something already in, in, in law that's written dealing with that? Yeah, well, um, um, the amounts of which that you can do for um, for um, forced imprisonment and all of that is within um, listed under Title Forty Eight. I mean, Title Excuse me, um, Title Eighteen. Uh. Okay, Title Eighteen. Oh, go right. Title Eighteen. It speaks about kidnapping. It speaks about forced imprisonment. 
um, all of these things are listed, and, and they have an amount attached to it. Okay, so 18, that's just, just uh, Google Title 18? Right, that is criminal, right, that is under criminal, um, under the criminal um, matters, and that's what you would go right. into. It's based on the violations up under the criminal matters. Now, if it's civil, you would go to Title, um, I think it's Title 42, if it's civil. So you would go to Title 42 for the civil matter and see how much um, um, under there in which that um, the matter is going for. But for criminal matters, it's um, Title 18. For civil matters, it's Title 42. Okay, okay. Now, I'm here in Chicago. You said something about, is that the same thing what you were saying now? Like I said, it was a part of, part of broken up. I came in late about as far as taking your birth certificate. You said there's a place in Chicago and there's a place in New York. Was that the same discussion you were having as far as with the with talking about the bond, looking at the bond? Yeah, well, what we were talking about specifically was talking about the connections to the um, corp um, of America in which that um, um, is actually, I guess you can say, is um, owned um, through these banking systems and what they use. And In other words, like, when you go – to the um, www.qsip.com. We were talking about the QSIP number. The QSIP okay. number is your uh, social security number without the dashes. Right, right, right. Okay, okay and you have an auditress number, which is w um, with the dashes. So you have a QSIP number and an auditress number. But there are two main outlets. One is in Chicago and one is in New York. All right? The one in New York is the DT Depository Trust Corporation. Yeah, no, nah, it's not that I'm stubborn and I'm stuck. I'm just going to say it out. Okay. So that, that is what's going on with that. Uh, we're going to go on to the next call. We'll be getting ready to end the show um, soon here. So we have one more caller. Um, caller on the line. 732, you're on the line. No, um, going to get the daily horoscope read, but I'm, in the, I'm an astrologer. Right, well, I'm not no. Thing. Thing, no, 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 no. You gotta understand, team. No, no, I it's not the same thing. When you go get your when you go get a horoscope read, that is not. That is not the science. Um, we're gonna let you do that. You feel what I'm saying? All right, seven seven zero. Hello. I am in college. Yes, I can't even read your horoscope because that shit is not the science of astrology. Hello? No, you can't yes, read it. Yes, I can. This is 770. This is Taurus. I haven't yes, met in my life. You're on the line. Are you kidding me? What? I love them. You just bumped your fucking yes, head. Yeah, are you kidding me, bro? I love people. You I do? I people. I know. Exactly you know what my that point. Mean? You're a Taurus and you're full of shit. Who's no, saying? I'm not full of shit. My brother's a Taurus. Peace. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Do you have a question? Misty? Yes, you can we can hear you. You can on you can go on and ask your question. Hello? Yes. Okay, please. my question my, my question okay, my question is um we um basically put in a intent to sue on a judge and um then we put in a verified complaint and then mm -hmm. an affidavit and an affidavit in support of the verified complaint. And um now I'm trying to understand what the next steps are so we can get our day in court. You did this at a state level or federal? State level. Um, we filed with the Attorney General. Uh, we sent a copy of the verified complaint to the Attorney General. Everything that came in that uh, email package um, with instructions on how to do that without using a lawyer. Right. But it doesn't, it doesn't say how to get our day in court. Okay. So you sent in the information. Did you um, go down to... The, uh, what is this, criminal or civil? Okay, well, I really don't know if it's criminal or civil. Um, the case was 
criminal, so they said. Um, it was false imprisonment. Um, he was right. like, from so like you, said you want civil then? You want remedy? You want remedy? So yeah. you have to go to the civil. Well, you would take your information down to the civil section and open up a case. Go to the civil um 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 division of the courthouse and mm-hmm. open up a case. Okay, but how do we open up the case? Do we open up the case by pressing charges against the, this judge? They'll they'll give you they'll give you um you just take it to the clerk and tell them that you want to open up a case and you put the information in their box and they'll either tell you then that they can open up the case and um they'll take it in the back, find out um if they have a court date or whatever case that they need and then they'll open up the case for you. And they'll give you a um the um number um um and a date. For the case, they give okay. you a case number and the date for the case. Yeah, well, they keep playing a nut roll. You know, they keep on trying to run out the 180 days, basically. And we're like almost like 10 days away from the 180 days being gone. So they have been giving us like the hardest time. County clerk refusing the file. We went back with two witnesses to. Uh, attest to what they're doing. We asked them to sign a statement. They refused to do that. So, you know, we just basically wanted to know how to get our day in court. So basically to get our day in court, we would need to go down to the civil portion of the courthouse. And right, to the civil, to the civil filing section, right. Mm-hmm. Okay, I have a friend on here that has a question of, uh, Misty, are you there? I had a, a friend on the call that had a question, but I don't know what happened. I think she may have gotten dropped off. But basically that was it. Did you have any questions? He said basically go to the civil part of the courthouse and and file a complaint there, correct? Say it again. You said once we go to the civil portion of the courthouse? Right. They will tell you what to do at the civil filing section because you're trying to seek remedy. The remedy is on the civil side, not the criminal side. If you're going to okay. do it, you did a criminal complaint and all of that, you need to do a civil complaint under Title exactly. 42. Okay. Okay. Because they... they they, you know they're not going to tell us how to do it. They said, uh, right. oh, you need to talk to your lawyer, but they know there is no lawyer on this. No, no. You need to do, if you're trying to seek remedy, you have to do it on the civil yes. side. You can't do it on the criminal side, so you have to do it um, under the um, the civil rights violations. Denial of um, of, um, of, um, rights. Um, denial of rights from the 42. Um, I think it's 1983, um, five, 1985, 86. Um, you have to do right. So you have to go to those particular um, where it talks about denial of um, rights and denial of undercolorable law and all the uh, under, you know civil rights matters. So you would use that in the civil rights violation. Okay. Now that's at, now that's at the um, lower court level. Now, do you want to do that at the federal court level? Then that's something else. Okay. Um, my friend has a question. I'm trying to see if she on the phone or not. Hold on. Oh no. What you say? Her name, um, her name is Misty. Misty, are you on the phone? She has a very important question. Her son is in, in prison, and um, basically she said that her son was beat into confessing something um, that he didn't do, and they're holding him in federal prison, and she had a question about it. Um, well, did I put federal on prison, well, I don't know if she's on the phone. She's not on the phone, but I can tell you, and you can please tell her so you can write this information down. So you can, if you got a pen, please get a pen and some paper right now, and I can tell you the information for the federal um, proceedings. Okay. Okay. One moment, please. One moment. Can you turn my TV down, please?
Okay. I'm ready, sir. Okay. Um, you have various now, now now you can tell her to look up this information. This is um I guess you can say the information in which that breaks down. Um mm-hmm. the federal side. Um you have you have the two seventy three, two seventy four, and two seventy five. Um, these are um federal forms in which that is the bid bond, performance bond and and um the bid bond, performance bond and the payment bond. That's what these mm-hmm. are. And you can actually pull these up off a line. Now these are for the federal side. The ones I made mention of earlier is the twenty four, twenty five, twenty five A is for the state. But at the federal level you need two seventy three, two seventy four and two seventy five. So being that he's held at the federal level, these are the forms in which that he needs, and they have to be filled out. And, of course, you will have to attach, um, I guess you can say you're going to have to attach um, with that. Um, I see, she don't know anything about how much the bond is. She has to go to fidelity.com or track mm-hmm. down how much that bond is, she might, you know, she will have to find out how much that bond is for. The birth certificate bond or the, the bond, the prison oh, bond. the bond was that, right. Now, you would use the birth certificate, all right, as leverage on that particular right. um, bond. Right. Okay. But which one you are know, we looking up? So, Right, so half of the give me a call and I'll send out the information. It's 252-767-5213. Well, I have the information that you sent me. Um, you sent me quite a few documents. Um, I just know that she had some questions. And I really, really don't know what her questions actually were because, you know, maybe she's disconnected from the call some kind of way. But um, right. I'll, we'll, we'll, when can we give you a call? Um, I'll be back um, probably Tuesday of this coming week. Okay. Okay, this is Diamond, by the way. Uh? I say this is Diamond, by the way. Oh, diamond peace, peace, yes. <laughs> okay, peace. All right, well, that was it for my question um, uh, with the civil uh, civil lawsuit. Okay. And you, you answered my question. And um, okay. I'll contact I'll contact you. Um, she and I will contact you next week. Okay. Okay, thanks, peace. Peace. Now, before we get off, let me explain some things. The charging instrument created behind any charge is called a bid bond, and the bid bond is the evidence of the sum of money due to the debt of the charging instrument, which is to be settled and closed or foreclosure, which is basically to sell and close that account. So every time a criminal case is started in any court, which actually all criminal cases are civil, a bid bond is already filled out, okay? So what you have to do is the GSA Form 24, as if it's at a state level, all right? However, if it's at a federal district court level, a bid bond, is a 275, all right? Now, is in, um, now Form 273 is the reinsurance performance bond, and standard Form 274 is the payment bond, okay? This is what we were just talking about, all right? So there's three bonds for every case. There's a big bond a performance bond, and a payment bond. The bid bond is the bond to set the value of the draft, which is the amount of money they're looking for to settle and close the case. 
and, and a bid bond has already been issued when the case is lodged in the court. In other words, as soon as they put your name on that um, list, that court list, a bond has already been it's already been written. It is issued by the clerk to establish this. Can you call this phone number for me, please? On your phone, because my phone is tied up. Okay. So, let's get back to another thing, too. When a cop gives you a ticket and you go to court, the judge is using this as a credit item to trade in the market. The, 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 court, the um, cop does all of the paperwork in the car. He's creating the assessment and the paperwork in his car when he makes up the ticket by using the name, social security number, and the driver's license number. So they are assuming that you voluntarily that they uh, that you voluntarily gave it to the cop and make the and to make the trade. So every cop is a private business contract contractor working for the corporation. But this is um, true, you know, so, you know, um, if this is true, then you can follow up on every trade made in your name on your exemption. How do you do that? You have to do a FOIA, which is basically um, 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 you can send in um, to the federal agency in order to find out the transactions in which that has been actually used on your name to find the um the bond writer um uh, written on um, the find the bond written on your um birth certificate and you can actually use that and access your exemption through the stock market that way. So it's the Freedom of Information Act. All right? So you will actually um do it through the Freedom of Information Act. You can actually find out what's going on with you through there. So this is a lot of information. We're gonna let you marinate over that. All right? And uh, we're going to um, see you all next week. Peace and blessings. We out. And uh, we're going to um, see you all next week. Peace and blessings. We out. And uh, we're going to um, see you all next week. Peace and blessings. We out. And uh, we're going to um, see you all next week. Peace and blessings. We out. And uh, we're going to um, see you all next week. Peace and blessings. We out. Um, we're going to um, see you all next week. Peace and blessings. We out. Um, we're going to um, see you all next week. Peace and blessings. We out. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that Buddha consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Burn. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Burn. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. Burn. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Burn. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know how intention is straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, 
bring you all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. 